California. Uh, Del- uh, is needing prayer this morning. Pray for her. Those are the two that's called in sick today. Ask God to heal their bodies. And I know God can touch them. How many knows God can heal those bodies in the name of Jesus? Amen. They're, they're spread out across the building. We've got uh, classes going on all across. Let's pray for their classes today. we got uh, from this age on down. So we've got young marriage class going on. So if you're, if you're fitting in that age group, 36 and under, I, I, I encourage you to go to that young marriage class um, before you come to me for marriage counseling. Praise the Lord. You would enjoy that young marriage class. I promise you they had a good time last night. Also, we have uh, all the other classes, teenagers and on down classes. But let's pray for these that need prayer today. Lord, we love you. Thank you for this opportunity to come together today. We pray, Lord, you bless, Lord, and use every teacher on the campus today. I ask you to anoint the students, God, to hear your word, God, and condition our heart to receive what your word says. Today, Lord, we ask you to use this sanctuary. God, we need healings to take place. Need you reach out, Lord, and touch those that are are hurting today. Touch Sister Turner, God, and Sister Delana, Lord. I pray you touch her where she's at, God. Let the Holy Ghost heal these bodies. You are a miracle worker. We believe your hand is on them. And God, we ask you to anoint this offering and bless it for your use. In Jesus' name we praise you. Amen. God bless you. Give you a chance to give. Got a special speaker today. One uh, One of my favorite preachers right here. Amen. Sister Hunt. Amen. So uh, follow along with her. She's going to be in Proverbs chapter 24. Just turn your Bibles to that chapter, and let's see what God has for us today. God bless. Oh, we seem so spread out today. Is there any way, anyone that might just kind of come up just a little bit just for this period of time? I know that some cannot, but if you can, just give me somebody to look at, kind of closer there you go thank you thank you and that is what I'm looking at all right you are teacher's pet today anybody else want to be the teacher's pet oh you're already there all right come on up thank you thank you very much thank you all right oh sister Bridget brother Tony y'all been through so much this week come on down I love you guys thank you so much you're such great sports thank you um there is um, not a screen today, so which is fine because I never sent my verses. And, and just a few minutes ago, I sent a whole copy of my lesson, so I, I didn't do my due diligence. But um, So if you have a Bible, please raise your hand because we are going to have some verses that we need to look up, okay? All right, awesome, awesome. And I need someone to run around with the microphones, but I lost them. Where's the microphones? Brother Hunt has them. All right, we got someone to run around with the things. All right, thank you very much. Um, I have two things to say before I say anything, all right? Um, We have our ladies' Bible study. Um, The daytime Bible study will be on Fridays at 12, Sister Sammy is starting the um, nighttime Bible study as well. This one begins the first Friday in September, and it will go weekly. Um, There is, uh, like, one time that I'm going to be out of town, but other than that, it's going to go weekly. It lasts six weeks. I've made folders for all of the ladies that I hope can attend. It says, no problem, llama, all right, because we don't want to be drama llamas do we no we don't and what this is this six weeks lesson is about when offenses happen and so I think it's going to be dynamic I I just think it's going to be good I love for our ladies to get in there and talk and and we get in there and we confess and it's just a a beautiful thing and um, also the Lord has been dealing with me, and there will be more information coming about this. But we're um, about to endeavor a small ministry, and it's called the SAS Sisters. And this ministry is the Single Again Sisters. Um, that, that would be widowed or divorced or um, what the case may be, and we will begin with a luncheon. I'll let you know where. And, um, and so whenever I begin passing you out these flyers, I want you to be warned. Um, and Sister Vivian has agreed to help me with this. And I, so I think it's going to be uh, probably more so from her than from me. 
uh, it's going to be uh, it's going to be something the women I think I feel like our women need to strengthen one another and it's just going to be a great thing so all right um, today our lesson is on revenge Brother Hunt had asked me to teach, and uh, and at first I said no, and <laughs> I was like, I don't have enough time, and uh, then he said, fine, I'll teach, and I was like, oh, wait a minute, yes, sir, I will teach, so here I am, because I feel that my calling is connected to be there for his calling, for without him and his covering, I am nothing. And so I love my husband, and I give him honor. Thank you, Brother Hunt, for asking me, for asking me. And so someone's going to have to keep up with my time. I, I don't know. Honey, will you pull my phone out or something? All right. Um, revenge, a poison that keeps on giving. You ever heard of that? I just made it up, unless y'all heard it somewhere before, maybe. But so, um, <laughs> so that's what I'm going to talk about. Have, has anyone here ever had the desire to give revenge? Okay, all right, all right, all right. Um, to retaliate. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have. I'll just start with a confession, okay? One day, your brother Hunt said, watch out. <laughs> One day we were, Brother Hunt, someone was trying to pull Brother Hunt into an altercation, and he was doing the godly thing, and he was walking away, and we were going to our vehicle, and then that person happened to mention something about one of my babies, thinking that they would really grab Brother Hunt's attention, and he would come. It was not Brother Hunt. It was Sister Hunt that jumped up on that car that carport and was in that person's face screaming and da 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 redneck city Jerry Springer all over again and um and you know what happened they got what they wanted they were wanting it out of him but they really didn't think that it was going to come from me and you know what how it made me feel dirty I felt so dirty. And, you know, even now sometimes when I think about that, it's like, it, it, it's like a, ugh, I can't believe I acted like that. I went right to their level. And we do that, do we not? We, we ha I hope you haven't never done like I did. I didn't cuss anybody. But, um, but you know what? There's cussing without using cuss words. There is. There is. So don't let things bring you down. Don't let people uh, bring you to a place that makes you feel dirty where you, you're, um, where the, it's just, it brings you from where you need to be in Christ, right? So let us, let us not do that, okay? Our, um, our key verse today is Proverbs 24 and 29. Um, and so on this, let's see, who could look that up? Somebody, will you look that up? Proverbs 24, 29. Okay, Brother Hunt, will you look up James 1 and 20? Um, who else has a Bible? Okay, Sister Betsy, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Sister Sharla, Matthew 18, 35. Who else? Brother, um, Ephesians 4 and 32. All right, and then just here shortly. Someone want to do a lot of reading? All right, Brother Brian, Leviticus 24, 17 through 22. All right, that way we got it. We got some things started. Okay, um, who has our microphones? I want us to talk today. I want us to read today. When it's your turn, raise your hand and they'll bring you a mic. So let's practice. Proverbs 24, 29. She raised her hand. See, she listens so well. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. Oh, Brother Hunt, I forgot to pray. You prayed. All right, all right. Thank you. Hmm. That's right, you did, but I was in the carnal messing with microphones. You are right. Okay. Sister Courtney, um, please read this. Say not, I will do so to him as he hath done to me. I will render to the man according to his work. Ooh. So what's those first two words? Say not. So it's telling us what not to do, right? A lot of times, Brother Hunt has said this, we say this about ministry, may not know what to do, but we definitely know what not to do. 
So right here it's saying, say not. I'm going to do to him like he has done to me, right? Yes. All right, so somebody tell me. Raise your hand real quick. What is revenge? Raise your hand. Come on, come on, real quick. All right, he needs a microphone. Follow the hands. Raise your hand high. There you go. All right, what is revenge? Well, Sister Hunt, my definition of revenge would be to do unto others as they've done to me, whether it be good, bad, or indifferent. But I would imagine that revenge, to me, my perspective is if you hit me, I'm going to hit you that much harder. Or whatever you did to me, I'm going to magnify that by 100%. That's what will salivate my revenge feeling to make sure I got you back better than what you did to me. That's good. That's good. All right. All right, Sister Regina. To get even. To get even. All right. All right. If, you, if at any point you got something to say, raise your hand and they will bring you a microphone. Anybody else? Revenge. Revenge. All right. All right. Well, here it says um, Webster's Dictionary defines revenge as to avenge oneself, okay, usually by retaliating in some kind or degree, if it's with a physical weapon, a verbal weapon, right, um, or to inflict injury in return for something, such as to revenge an insult, all right? All right, so, um, and it's really not talked about that much, revenge, right? It's something we kind of don't, don't cover so much within the Christian realm because we all got Jesus, and we're never going to strike out at anyone that strikes out at us. We're never going to seek revenge, never, because we have the Holy Ghost. Hmm. Okay, then why would the Lord need to put it in the Bible yeah, yeah, we, it is something. If you've not dealt with it, you will. I pray that you don't give in to it, all right? So, um, well, what else does the Word of God say about what we're supposed to do when somebody, somebody strikes at us? Um, one thing is we want to follow God's ways. So everyone say, Lord, show me your ways. Right, right. All right, so say it with a little more meaning. Lord, show me your ways. Okay, you ask them, so here we go. Here's God's ways. James 1 and 20, who has that? Raise your hand. Brother Hunt. Okay, who has the Proverbs 3 and 5? Okay, Brother Terry. All right, Brother Hunt. Re and then I'm going to ask you to explain, explain it, or you can pinpoint someone to explain it. Go ahead. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Ooh, somebody tell me, what, just, what does that mean? Or give me an example of that. Well, it's talking about um, the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. You know, we're supposed to seek after God's righteousness. We'll never be able to meet God's righteousness in this flesh body that we live in. But we're supposed to seek after his righteousness. And our, our thinking, sometimes we think that we're really right when we're not. Because we're in the flesh. So we have to, sometimes it's hard for us to go back and say, I shouldn't have did that or I shouldn't have thought that. So what he's saying here, he says, our wrath, let me go back and read again, for the wrath of man worketh not the righteous of God. Don't, don't try to blame God and say, well, God, God wouldn't allow me to go through this anyway. God, God, don't, God don't expect me to take this this way. How many ever done that? You ever said, well, God wouldn't want me to, nobody treat me that way. Well, we use that and we say that because it helps us feel better when we go off on somebody. Doesn't it? I got revenge. But that's not God saying, hey, that ain't the way I work. So I, that's the way I feel like it. But anybody else is welcome to make a uh, amend. That's good. That's good. All right. All right. Well, I, I, I see exactly what Pastor's saying. You know, it, my, my, look, my outlook about it would, you know, uh, be what would Jesus do? Mm -hmm. if, you know, when Jesus was being crucified, I imagine he could have got himself out of that situation. Yeah. You know, but, what, you know, you get offended, disrespected, 
somebody gets fresh with you, if we can automatically say, well, what would Jesus do in this situation? And we definitely take a different path. That's good. All right, Sister Betsy is going to read Proverbs 3 and 5. And who had Matthew 18? Okay, right here. And who had Ephesians 4 and 32? Right there, Brother Terry will be next, okay? Um, Brother Lee will be next, Brother Terry. Brother Lee will be next. All right, go ahead, Sister Betsy, please. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. All right, Lord, show me your ways. What is it saying, Sister Betsy? Just trust the Lord with all thine heart. That's good. That's good. That's it. That's we're showing God, show me your ways. The wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Then he's saying, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Don't lean to your own understanding. Things happen, and we can't. I'm a fixer. I don't know if y'all are. I am a fixer. I don't care if I, I don't get to eat that day. If you got a problem, I'm going to fix your problem. I may not fix my problem, but I'm going to fix yours. Um, but we can't lean to our own understanding. We have to learn to give more to God. Give more to God. Matthew 18 and 35. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. Wow. Now tell me what that means. I would say that would mean you can't expect God to forgive you if you can't forgive others. Mm -hmm. But they insulted me. You have to forgive them. But, but they hurt my feelings still have to forgive them. But they keyed my car. God's going to have to forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to forgive them. And we'll talk about the difference with revenge and justice, okay? Um, but keying their car is not justice, okay? <laughs> we will talk about that. All right, I got to throw you off there. We wanted to see if she was... Uh, prayed up today or not. <laughs> All right, Ephesians 4 and 32. Who had that? Okay, Brother Lee, go ahead. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. What's it saying, Brother Lee? Well, it's basically saying right there pretty much what, what she just said in the last one. If we don't forgive our brothers who offend us, we can't have true forgiveness from God. And the verses right before that, it even talks about quenching the Holy Spirit in our lives and holding on to bitterness. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't forgive someone, believe me, you're going to be bitter. Yes. Whether you admit it or not, whether you smile at them when you see them, if you haven't truly forgiven someone who has offended you, it's going to hinder us spiritually in our walk with God. Yes. And it says that God forgave us for Christ's sake. Well, to me, that means if we hold unforgiveness, all the persecution that Christ went through and the beating and the scourging and the stripes he took and even being crucified we can hold on to unforgiveness and make all of it of none effect mm -hmm. That's which exactly right. that really just even even your car being keyed how can mm -hmm. that compare to stripes on Jesus's back and being nailed to a cross mm -hmm. and if he was willing to forgive that it's hard like you said because of the flesh our flesh mm -hmm. is enmity against God and our will is against God's will, but that's why we have to crucify that will, and we have to forgive our brothers because unforgiveness is its as bad to our spirit as stress is to our physical bodies. Yes, it is. That is exactly right, exactly right. Unforgiveness. Hey, my friend came in. Wonderful. People who have been hurt or portrayed. All right, we just talked about what God's ways are, okay? So now I'm going to just get a couple of ladies to hold this for me. These are ah, bungee cords. Is this one dry rider? No, I think I'm used to them. All right, bungee cords. Oh, yeah, that's what. All right, here you go, sis. Oh, you come on up. There you go. All right, all right. So um, our, sweet sister Sh our sweet sister Sharla is the offense. I mean, you are like, like, not like in football, but you are the offender. You have really hurt her feelings. 
Don't be smiling at her. <laughs> you have really hurt her feelings, okay? And you don't even care that you have hurt her feelings. <laughs> All right, so there they are. There they are. Get where everybody can see you. Okay, kind of at an angle so everybody can see you. All right, there you go. Just stay there. All right, people who have been hurt or betrayed seem to believe that without any doubt, if the other party suffers, that they're going to feel better and their emotional pain will lessen. Is this true? No. No. Mm-mm. It doesn't. It makes you feel, it does. It makes you feel dirty. It makes you feel, oh, now I'm as bad as they are. Right? Okay. All right. So I was thinking, and, and I, had to, I had to, like, delete both apps. But I got this thing where, um, you know, news is, um, what, what was that they is supposed to be? Unbiased or whatever. So I would watch. Uh, on my on my phone, I would pull up two different news stories. Like it would be the same story, but I would watch to see how like Fox portrayed it and how like CNN would portray it. All right, and um, and so on this one particular thing, um, someone had and it was I don't even know how it was a story, but somebody sent a tweet out that somebody didn't like. People are like dying of starvation. And it makes the news because somebody is offended by a tweet. I'm, I'm, okay, this is not political. This is as political as I'm going to get. So someone was baited with the tweet, okay? And I thought, oh, man, what's going to happen? And do you know what that baited person did? It was phenomenal. You ready? They sent a laughing emoji and said, LOL. It was done and over with. It didn't make the news the next day. Now, what if that said person had threw an insult back? It would have been on the news the very next day. And it would have went on and on and on and on. And so here's the offender. Yeah. And when Sister Courtney seeks revenge, and she did, she did not send the LOL laughing emoji to what she put on Facebook. So you know what she's done? She has tied herself to the situation. She tries to get away from it. Act like you're trying to get away. There you go. And, but, but she's pulled right back. Don't show your strength. And, and so she's pulled right back to it. And she tries to get away, but she's pulled right. It just never ends. It's the song that never ends. It goes on and And then it becomes a joke to everybody but you because they've done forgot what it was even about. And here you are still tied to it, still tied to it. All right? So um, I want us to think about that. What are some examples of revenge? Just give me some uh, examples of revenge. You got to put your hand up so they can run around with the microphone because I know five people have examples of revenge. All right, let's see. Sister Nance, give me an example of revenge. You don't have one? Oh, she's got a, a sweeter spirit than me. Let's see. Brother Tony, give me an example of revenge. All right, what would be an example of revenge? <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Here's one. Give me an example of revenge. So your brother or sister slaps you and you hit them back. That's good. And a lot of times probably harder. Yeah, that's it. That's, that's it. it that is where it starts. That's right. Okay. I had my car keyed. So <laughs> and they took and they didn't just key it. They took a knife. <laughs> And they went across the whole back of my car. And it's not the car I got now, but my, it's the one my daughter drives now. And that was my first new car. And I cried. It hurt bad. <laughs> I know that sounds stupid, but when I saw it, I was like, I couldn't believe that they would do it. They don't, I, they don't know, but I knew who did it. And I had to pray. I wanted to key their car back, I'll be honest. I wanted to just, I was very upset, you know what I'm saying? But I didn't, I just, I said, and I had to like, just like, I had to pray and ask God to help me with that. But that was very, very hard. 
very hard to get past for me because I, it was like it's indented. If you go and look at the green Kia, in the very back you can see it. It's a line all the way across it. It won't go away because they did it with a knife. So, I mean, but you know what? I've been kind to that person, and I will continue to do so, and I pray for them yeah. because if I pray for them, and something I learned a long time ago, uh, it was a message called about uh, me having an offense, is I always, they said in that, they said, if you pray for them and say, God, I forgive them, but I want you to forgive them as well for what they've done. Don't hold it against them. And so that's something I, I try to do all the time, and that's not always easy to do. But if you do that, you it will relieve, it will release off of you. And I can see this person now, and I can say I love that person yeah. because I do. That's good. That's good. One more, Brother Hunt. I don't know where my time is. You know, um, <clears throat> when I was a kid, we always liked to go back and just talk about kid stuff, but especially when they say your mama, you know, is fat or whatever, we always come back with a joke. And we laugh at things like that, but that is where it starts. It's a seed planted in them. And in, even in adults, we want to get even. I mean, come on, husbands. If your wife says something about you, don't we always try to find something to come back at, you know, because especially if it hurt and it stabs you. But revenge is where we are. We, we try to find something to, to get higher than the next person. I want to be higher, you know. Well, I caught a fish this big. That ain't nothing, bro. I caught one that big, you know. And, it, and it's the story goes on and on. But this is what I want to ask you. Is it okay to get revenge if you say, bless their heart afterward? Oh, my. Oh, like my. Oh, my. All right. All right. That's good. That's good. All right. Now, here's some examples. I'm going to give you some because I didn't realize my time. Man, this could be like a 12-week series. We could do this. Exam oh, no. Y'all are done. Get up there. Quit smiling. <laughs> You're the offense. All right. So um, what's some examples of revenge? What about these mass shootings? What about some of the shootings in school? The kid is bullied. So what do they do? They seek revenge. All right. All right. What um, the hit list, everybody that ever did them wrong, they, they, they make yeah. out a list. That is revenge. Right. Um, destroying the property of someone. That, that is revenge. That is um, revenge that happens. What about criticism? You kill their honor. You kill their reputation. You kill their confidence because you're going to get them. Saying something hurtful. That's right. Sometimes people use revenge and, and retaliate as a way to control people. You're going to see it my way or you're going to pay. You know anybody like that? Or is anybody in here like that? Yeah, see, yeah. See, now nobody's going to be like, I'm like that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now, and then people, I've, I've heard it so many times used out of context. Eye for an eye. The Bible says eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth, right? Yeah, yeah. We're supposed to eye for an eye. Get her eye. Get her tooth. She, yeah. she hit my tooth. Yeah, no, no. What does the word of God really say about that? Brother Brian, Leviticus 24, 17 through 22. And then um, I need someone to look up Deuteronomy 19, please. All right, go ahead, Brother Brian. And he that killeth any man shall surely be put to death. And oh, my. Oh, oh, yeah. Preach it, preach it, preach it. Yeah. And he that killeth think. a beast shall, be, shall make it good, beast for beast. And if a man cause a blemish in his neighbor, and he hath done, so shall it be done to him. Oh, see, I'm biblical in getting back at him. Mm, you see what the word of God is saying. Breach for breach, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. And he <coughs> hath caused a blemish in a man, so shall it be done to him again. Mm -hmm. And he that killeth the beast, he shall restore it. And he that killeth the man... He shall be put to death. Oh, you mess with me, I get to do the same thing back to you is what we think, right? We try to, we take it out of context and we don't read the whole thing. But the next, let's read verse 22. Pay attention. Pay attention. Go ahead. Ye shall have one manner of law as well as for the stranger, as for one of your own country. For I am the Lord your God. This is talking about the law. This is not giving you permission to go strike back at anyone. This is saying the law is the same. 
for you as it is for you. The law is the same for a foreigner or for someone that is in their very own country. That is what that is saying. Now, and we, and, and now some of the law follows this, yes, but this is not a justification for vid, uh, vigilante justice. The Word of God does not give us permission to strike back. All right? All right, so uh, Deuteronomy 19, who has that? I had, did I give it to somebody or did I just say somebody? Brother Hunt, Deuteronomy 19, I want you to read verse 21. And thine eyes shall not pity, but life shall go for life, eye for an eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot. Ooh, hallelujah. There again, I feel vindicated. Ooh, I am following the will of the Lord. All right, but let's see right above those verses. Brother Hunt, what does Deuteronomy 19, 16 through 18 say? If... If a false witness rise up against any man to testify against him that which is wrong, then both the, the men between whom the controversy, it shall stand before the Lord, before the priest and the judges, which shall be in those days. And the judges shall make diligent inquisition. Yep. And behold, if the witness by, be a false witness, and have testified falsely against his brother. Okay, so could it be that it's saying here, allow the judges, allow the law, allow a system to deal with this. It is, it's not okay. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth is not okay. It, can, it may be possibly a guideline for the law, but it is not a guideline for how you live your daily life. It is not. The law, judges, must decide, not vigilante justice. Um, this, and I don't know who this man is, so I meant to look him up, so I'm just going to tell you what he said, because I, I might be telling you, like, a bad person or something. But it says, to seek justice is a good and noble thing. To seek revenge out of hatred is something that will devour your very soul. You never get away from it, Courtney. You never get away from it. You can never get away from it. Revenge is about, um, Retaliation, justice is about restoring balance. Restoring balance. The motive of revenge has mostly to do with expressing rage. You made me mad. I'm going to show you how mad I am. You're not going to mess with me again because I'm going to throw it right back at you. Um, it, maybe it is uh, expressing hatred, spite. It's a protest or a payback. And its intention is to do harm to do harm. Um, it's not about justice. Revenge is not. It's about the victim affirming their inborn right to retaliate against something that is done wrong to them. Where is that in the Word of God? Revenge comes at a price. Instead of moving on, you're tied to that situation. Um, Right here it says, it, it, there is a saying that says, before you embark on a journey of revenge, dig two graves. Because you go down to, it says, another saying is, I, an eye for an eye only ends up making the whole world blind. If we go around re re retaliating all of the time, what happens? When, um, when you let something go and you don't get revenge, then eventually the whole thing just doesn't seem to be as traumatizing or as a big of a deal as it did in that moment, in that moment. Um, sometimes it's easier to, well, anytime, it would be easier to move on if you have not sought full revenge. When people do get revenge, they can no longer trivialize the situation Instead, they go over it and over it and over it and feel worse. And sometimes we think, um, you know, an, an offender, we think, oh, karma's going to get them. I don't have to worry about it. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. And then we'll say, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. I know that the Lord is going to gouge her eyes out because she, what did she do? She took my place in the choir. Yes. And so I'm going to get back at her. And, um, but what, 
what does that do? What does that do? It, it doesn't. And then we'll say, oh, but karma. Karma's going to get them. And it's like we are like wanting a sideline seat to see how karma is going to get them. Now, how does that have to do with the ways of the Lord? We said, Lord, show me your ways. We just said it's forgiveness. That is God's ways. All right. Um, while the um, avenger, the person that's got offended, believes that, that you, the, the offender, got her just desserts. Okay? All right. She got what was coming to her, right? Because you gave it to her. She got what she was coming to her. Well, you know what she probably thinks? Quit smiling. Don't talk to her. Is, you know what she thinks? Man. Now, what I did was nothing like what she just did to me. A lot of times when you give revenge, it's, it's to a greater magnitude than what the offense even was. If you don't just let it go, let it go. Thank you so much, ladies, so much, ladies. Um, and then there's, how much time have I got, Brother Hunt? I don't know. Oh. 1108. 1108, okay. Okay, all right. All right, I want to talk to you about Saul, all right? And here's, I'm going to put this on, and I'm going to get my two help. Ah, you put this on. Come here, sis. All right, I get my two helpers to help again. Yeah, I thought you put it on me. No, you're going to put it on. All right. Okay. Oh, Sister Cheryl is, yes. Sister Cheryl is, um, is doing so great leading the choir, and she's doing the Bible quizzing. And, you know, in Sunday school the other day, Sister Hunt talked about Sister Cheryl too much. Did you see her get on the front row? Teacher's pet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so there she is. And, uh, and just keep that, okay? And here she is. She is, wearing, she is wearing this garment as a symbolism, okay, of her anointing and about the great things that she's doing for Christ. Here it is. Show them how, show them how pretty it is. Look at there. Look at her. All right. All right. Now we're going to talk about Saul. <laughs> one on one side and one on the other, please. All right. So we know, yeah. Okay, we know the story that, you know, that Saul was terrible to David. He was jealous. He was going to, David was going to get his throne, right? And so, I mean, that was um, probably a pretty serious thing, you know, it, it, it was. And so, um, so then there came a time when David's men, they were in this large cave. It was big enough that you could have brought a whole flock of sheep in. David's men, 600 men, could have been in that cave hiding. And so there Saul was, I'm trying to hurry, there Saul was, and he's like, told his, his little group of people, I got to go tend to some personal business. Y'all stay out there and let me go in here. So he did, and he didn't know that, that David and his soldiers were in the cave. And so Saul lays his, his cape, his garment down, and it symbolized his anointing. He's king. Look at here. She's king. She is the Bible quiz instructor, all right? She's directing the choir. Boy, look at that. Look at that. And so the men, I'm pretty sure, told David, ah, here's your chance. Let's kill him. Let's kill him. So David, he, he sneaks out. He sneaks out there where that cape was laid, and he cuts it. Oh, no, no, just don't cut her clothes. He cuts it. Yeah, cut it, cut it. Cut a piece off of it. Yeah, he cuts it. Yeah, yeah. Yes, cut it. it. Yeah, it was either that or one of his suit coats, and I couldn't figure out which one I could cut. So, yeah. Cut it pretty. Come on, cut it. All right. And so he cuts it. And, and cutting that garment at that point was a symbol. David was like, okay, he doesn't stand so tall anymore. I cut his garment. He's not going to be so praised anymore. Let me cut him down a few notches. I cut his garment. Looky there, all right? What'd they do? Turn around, turn around. What'd they do? There she is, and they're, they're cutting her garment. They're cutting her, her standing within the church. They're cutting her standing within society. So then David, he began to keep cutting. David began to, um, to feel bad about it, and he's like, no, no, no. We're not going to rise against Saul. 
and he allowed Saul to come pick up his garment and to go on his way. He felt bad. He felt bad about just trying to cut down who he was. When in what we would have thought, he would have had every right to kill him physically. Well, do we do this sometimes? It says here, um, sometimes we desire, we're power seekers, and we desire to use revenge in a way, she's hurt my feelings, she's come against me, okay? Brother Brent's not letting me direct the choir. He, he puts his mother-in-law up there. And so I'm going to get even with her. I'm going to, um, they're not going to think so highly about her because y'all really, she's not as great as what y'all think she is. And I have this deal with power. I'm a power seeker, so I'm going to let her know that I am not to be trifled with. You better go pray, and the Lord is going to lay it on your heart to let me direct that choir. All right? So you just make sure you pray because I'm going to keep cutting you. Yeah, and so um, what do we do? We began to soil their reputation. We give out just enough information to go ahead, keep cutting, cut some holes in it. Cut some holes. Just, oh, go, don't cut her shirt. Stab it. There you go. All right, and so we, we begin to, to tear at one another here within the church, and it's a way to retaliate and to revenge and, and a way to control. We want to destroy their robe of honor in ministry. And what do we do? We do it with our words. We do it with our actions. I'm not going to support that. If she's going to do it, I'm not coming. What am I doing? I am taking that, and I am cutting at her robe, her robe of ministry. And we do it. Um, what are some examples? What are some examples hmm? of ways that we begin to try to destroy one other? We retaliate in revenge. Are you scared to say? All right. I say most of it is with our words, Right? Right now, if you knew her like I knew her, there's a, if you knew Brother Brian, and 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 like if you knew some stuff on him that I knew on him, y'all wouldn't be all happy when it's time for him to preach on Wednesday night. You'd get a sore throat because you wouldn't be there. And what are we doing? We're stabbing his robe of ministry right there, right there, brother. That that, that is and that is a way that that we. We try to get revenge on on because we can't control the situation. We're hurt. We're hurt. Maybe they didn't key, maybe she didn't key the car, but she unintentionally she has hurt me. She has hurt me, brother. Go ahead. There were some among the Church of God at Corinth that uh -huh. wanted the preeminence, and so they made fun of Paul's looks, his bodily appearance, and also his his speaking. They said his preaching is contemptible, and his bodily presence is weak. But Paul said, when I get there, I'm going to come there in power. Mm, that's good. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. That They couldn't handle it, could they? So they began to make fun of him. Their revenge. Reven I I'll get at him. I'll get at him. Let's bring him down. He can't be better than me. I'll get him. Go ahead, Sister Ash. This is maybe a little bit ahead of what you're getting at. But I read just a couple of weeks ago that it takes five uh, words of encouragement to overcome one word of discouragement to somebody mm, hey and we're christians we're supposed to be encouraging are we not that's good that's good there was someone over here brother terry uh, go ahead I, I, I start plotting against them you start plotting against them all right all right all right see look at their show us look at her it was a really a cute jacket y'all all that needed to be updated is it needed a bigger button according to sister kelly and uh and i was gonna do it and but i never did and so, but now this garment look at there it was such a beautiful piece. And look, we have tore her ministry to rags because we could not control some of the things that she was doing in God. And God wasn't using me, so I'm going to retaliate against my sister. I'm going to seek revenge. She didn't pick me to, to lead. I keep using choir because that's, that's what I, I see her a forefront at. She didn't, she went and gave Sister Hunt words from the Lord. She has never once come and prayed for me. So let me destroy, let me destroy her garment, her garment of ministry. It says here, um, say not thou, I will recompense evil, but wait on the Lord. 
and he shall save thee. Let me tell you this. I, I actually did a typo, but I liked it, and so I left it. I, I put here, how is God how bored with any of this? And I thought, I meant to put honored, but it come out how bored. I think when the Lord looks down sometimes at us, and the trifling things that we, we try to be vindictive about and we try to um, get revenge about, when the Lord has clearly told us to be forgiving, how bored does he become? How bored does he become with us sometimes? Oh, here they go again. Here they go again. But how is the Lord honored in any of this when we begin to tear one, one another down? It says, we have, thank you very much, sis. She did wonderful. Give her a hand. Uh, uh, if your shirt is cut in any way, they will buy you a new one. So <laughs> they, did not, they did not sign a waiver before they used those weapons. Cut it. That's good. Cut it. Everybody cut a piece. Wonderful. All right. All right. It's will you help her 18. cut those pieces? She's going to hold it. Okay, I got about two minutes. We have to release our offenses to the Lord. When God avenges us, He's not always going to allow us to see it. We have to give it to the Lord, y'all. We have to give it to the Lord. And when the Lord avenges us, he does not always do it in the way that we think that he should. He does it in the way that he knows is right. Let us remember that God's ways are righteous. It says here in um, Psalms 145, 17 through 19, the Lord is righteous in all of his ways and holy in all of his works. It says, I want to go back here. It says in Proverbs 20 and 22, it says, wait on the Lord. He shall save thee. The Lord will vindicate you if you need to be vindicated. It says, for his ways are righteous. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him. To all that call upon him in truth, he will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry, and he will save them. The Lord is there for us. The Lord has our back. I know that the Lord told me many, and I'll tell you this, and it's just my go-to words because I know he spoke to me. Many years ago, he, he woke me up 5 o'clock in the morning. He said, do what you know to do that is right, and I will go before you. Did not know I had made half the church mad. And the Lord showed me, and I was like, oh, okay. So I, I don't know what I would have done if, I, if the Lord hadn't spoke to me. Years later, I was at Because of the Times, and I was dealing with something. And a woman in another state that did not even know me turned around to me, and she said, the Lord said, do what, you, see, do what you know to do that is right, and he will go before you. That is what we are required to do. Let us follow his will. Let us follow his ways, and let him take care of the rest of it. It's when we try to, to fix things that, that we become tied to them. When our hurts and we try to get even. We become tied and we can't get away from it. And the Lord is wanting us to be way over here in our walk with God. But we're stuck way over here because we're tied to needing to, to get revenge and, and needing to retaliate. But what if we just give it to the Lord? You know that... that all things will be revealed in time, and we know that. We have seen things happen. Not that we're sitting there and we're glad when things are revealed. Woo, now they know that person ain't all they said they was. No, no, that's not God's ways. We should be, um, Sister Vivian, like when she talked about her car, we should be praying for them. Wow, have you seen the car she drives now? If she would have been ugly and went and keyed that other person's car, she would have been spending that money on that new car on a lawyer probably. Yeah, yeah, the Lord blesses us when we are willing to let things go. What did he do? It says, Christ suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Who, when he was reviled, he reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously and I ask that we will do that that we will be we say we are Christians let us be Christ-like where there be no guile found found in our mouth that when we are reviled we do not retaliate we do not seek revenge when we suffer that we don't threaten 
but we are committed to allow things to be judged righteously. Let God have it. All right, thank you, guys. Love you all very much. Thank you.